Let's start with water in the wild, so to speak, and in large quantities, because in our modern scheme of civilization, we do use water in large quantities. You know, water is essential to life. Without water, there is no animal or vegetable life. Now, here's a desert scene. There's no water there, and you often find the skeletons of animals there that died for lack of water. Water comes to us in the form of rain, of course. All the water that we get on Earth comes out of the skies. Falls on the forests and on the fields and then drains into the little brooks and the little brooks into the larger brooks and the streams and finally the rivers and lakes and into the ocean. And in the meanwhile, it is being drawn up again by the sun and the cycle is repeated. From the beginning of history, we know that man has enjoyed water and used water in many ways. For instance, water power is an old trick. Here's a crude water wheel producing power and saving uh, hand labor. And of course, women haven't been behind men either. They know that water has some good qualities. But this water that we get that way that scours the earth and the city streets and is full of garbage and sewage and waste products and dirt of all kinds. And to use it, we have to screen out the impurities. And we screen it roughly with large grills of this kind in the first place and then through successively smaller grills. And finally, we put up a dam and create an artificial lake called a reservoir where the water is still and where the impurities sink to the bottom. Now it's in these reservoirs uh, that our little friends go to work for us, the minute one-cell bacteria that I mentioned before. They uh, destroy the organic life that is in the water. They absolutely eat it up or break it down, whichever way you want to put it. And this then sinks to the bottom of this reservoir where it becomes a sediment or a sludge, and we have good uses for that sediment or sludge. One thing that we can do with it is simply to pour it out where we want the uh, ground to be raised. We can use it to make ground, as we do with dredges in many places. Another thing is that in the process of purifying water, these bacteria help to produce a gas, and we can burn this gas. As a matter of fact, this gas is used to produce the power in some of these purifying stations, which I consider a neat trick. And of course, a third thing that we can do with this sediment or sludge is to use it as a fertilizer in our field because it contains a great many valuable chemical elements that help to produce uh, better crops. You know, the shepherds shear their sheep every year. Well, the wool is pretty dirty. The sheep are out in, in, in the fields, you know, and lie down in the dirt. It takes a tremendous amount of water to wash the dirt out of this wool. And that's a great industry, requiring an enormous amount of water. It has to be washed not once, but many times. Another thing that we recover in the washing of this wool is animal fat. And this animal fat, these oils, are used to make byproducts. One of them, uh, believe it or not, is a face cream that you will find in my lady's boudoir. And another thing that we can make from these oils and fats that we recover in this way is the raw material to which we can add the phenols for the purpose of making plastics.
Now this is sediment that we recovered in that fashion, and it's mixed with one of the phenols, and this is a plastic plant. A mold and a press, and presto. Out comes a housing of any design that we uh, have in the mold. We can make uh, dishes, we can make housings for cameras. We can make anything of that kind. Now it may seem a simple thing to uh, back up water with a dam and hold it under control, but there's more to it than just building a dam across a river or a stream and getting a large still body of water. Because we uh, do many things with that water and we have to keep it under control in many ways. So we have funnels and flumes and valves and screens and uh, different uh, ways of handling it for various purposes. One thing that we do at these uh, great dams is to produce electric power in great quantities. The water is uh, run so that it uh, goes through a turbine, a great turbine, which it turns at uh, terrific speed, and this turbine produces the electric power that uh, we use in such great quantities in this country. I'm sure you've seen these power lines going all across the country by Hill and Dale. We do a great deal of mining in this country. As a matter of fact, they do it in all countries. And we create great caverns, great long hollow galleries under the surface of the earth. Well, sometimes, if nothing is done about it, these galleries collapse down there. In which case, of course, the level of the ground above is lowered. And where that happens, water rushes in where there was no water before. Well, now we know that water under control is a powerful agency for good, but water out of control is a powerful agency for destruction. That's been proved many times over in many lands. And it's the reason why in this country we've spent billions of dollars for flood control in order to save life and property damage. Another thing, when we build a great dam for irrigation or for water supply purposes, we have to put in a lot of machinery uh, to uh, put this water uh, where we want it at the right time. And that's why we have powerful pumps and great gates and huge valves. And of course, we have to bring it from the reservoir to where we want it sometimes as much as 100 miles to a great city at a distance and then deliver it to the individual houses so that when you want the water, all you do is reach out and turn on a tap like this. And we use water in endless ways in all our industry and our commerce. Let's step into a steel factory for a minute. We know that we use water there to produce steam but we also use it in vast quantities for cooling purposes. In fact, there isn't a, an art or a science or an industry that doesn't use water and a great deal of it in many ways in producing whatever type of good that industry or art uh, turns out. And then, of course, we come to the personal use, such as when we water our flowers or take a shower, or go swimming, or go sailing, or any of another dozen ways in which we use it. And while we are using and enjoying it, let's remember this about water. It's essential to life. It's abundant in nature, 
but let's keep in mind the time, the money, and the labor that's spent to produce our great water supply system.